This is Dr. James Marion broadcasting from the Susan and Leonard Feinstein IBD Center. We are uh, broadcasting a special edition of our third Thursday from the IBD Center with a very special guest, Dr. Ryan Ungaro. We're going to be discussing the current COVID-19 pandemic and its implications for our inflammatory bowel disease patients. And I'd like to welcome you, Ryan, uh, for, uh, and thank you for joining us. Uh, we are both in uh, undisclosed remote locations <laughs> on Zoom for the time being. Uh, and uh, uh, Ryan, welcome. Thank you very much, Jim. It's uh, great to be here and discuss this important topic. And uh, as people can see, we're practicing our social distancing right now. Correct. And I, I want to point out especially that Ryan Angaro has taken uh, an international leadership position uh, from uh, his platform here at Mount Sinai in helping determine what the implications are for this pandemic for our patients and has already published useful information. But as we all know, the situation is rather fluid and hence the reason for the special edition of uh, the third Thursday. So Ryan, I wanna start with a very specific question. And again, uh, everything is quite fluid at this point. Could you give us a brief rundown of what exactly COVID-19 is? Sure, so there's a lot of terminology being thrown around, but COVID-19, is the disease that's being caused by a specific virus called SARS-CoV-2. Uh, this is in the same uh, family as uh, viruses that cause conditions such as SARS or MERS, which people may have heard of. And this family is a family called coronavirus, uh, which is also the same family where the common cold uh, it, type of virus is, is, lives as well. So COVID-19, though, is obviously a more uh, severe condition than the common cold. Um, and is uh, marked by certain symptoms that are flu-like symptoms. So in particular, the things that are most common are fever, chills, myalgias, which are basically muscle aches, body aches, feeling very fatigued, and cough. Um, and those are the most common symptoms uh, reported. Other symptoms, though, we're, we're recognizing uh, include congestion, sore throats, although unclear uh, how common those are, um, but certainly the first three I mentioned, fever, body aches, and cough are the, the hallmark symptoms. Um, and I think of interest uh, to our patients, um, the reason that this disease is of such concern is that it can progress to more severe forms. In case series from China, um, about 15 to 20% of patients did require being hospitalized. And of those, the smaller percentage uh, ended up in ICU and unfortunately uh, some passed away. The current uh, data about the mortality rate with this, medic with this uh, condition uh, has been varied and is in flux because as increased testing occurs, it's going to be new numbers we're going to see. Um, but it's ranged anywhere from 1% to 5%. Um, so it's really something that is um, in flux, but we know is concerning because even though, you know, the odds are most people will have a mild condition, there are a subset of patients that will have a severe case and on a population level can um, lead to a significant impact on our healthcare system. Yeah. So I think... Uh... Well, that, that's great. That's a great summary. And I think the issue of, well, how is this different from anything else that we encounter every year, such as influenza uh, and the like, is it's novelty, that it's entirely novel to our species. So we don't have the usual herd immunity that we enjoy with things such as influenza or even vaccinations to protect the population. Exactly. So, Ryan, you did a, a nice rundown of the symptoms. And one set of symptoms that I didn't hear you emphasize were GI symptoms. Are there GI manifestations of COVID that our IBD patients should be aware of? Yeah, so this is something that we're learning more about literally every day. Um, and there's increasing reports um, that actually GI uh, symptoms are potentially uh, one of the uh, hallmarks of COVID-19. Um, there's some cases, for example, the very first case reported in the United States where actually GI symptoms were the first presenting symptom uh, that included nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. And some reports out of China as well are showing that um, there's a significant number of patients that can, uh, can experience GI symptoms. And the reason for this, we think, is that the receptor for uh, COVID-19 virus, or SARS-CoV-2, so the, the way that this virus gets into cells it's called ACE2, and this is something that's on the surface of cells. Obviously, in the uh, 
nasal passages and, and upper airway and in the lungs, but it's also expressed quite highly in the intestines. Um, and so um, it's possible that one of the reservoirs um, or sites of infection of uh, the COVID-19 virus is the gastrointestinal tract. And actually there's been some research uh, emerging that's looked at uh, the virus or looked for the virus in patient's stool and it's actually found it present. Um, and you know, depending on what study you looked at, uh, you know, ranges are in the 25% uh, plus range where you can actually detect the virus in stool. So this is something we're learning more about. Is this a, a reservoir for the virus in one way that it's, that it's transmitted through a fecal oral route where, um, you know, where it's to be more likely to be on the surface, not just from coughing, but if, um, you had went to the bathroom recently and someone touches something that that may be one way that contact to con contact surface transmission happens. But this is something that's evolving right now. Um, and uh, there's a lot of research going on into this. Yeah. So I think the idea here that we need to keep our ears tuned for the new data and information as the science reveals it. There's a huge reservoir of uh, an unknown with this particular infection. Uh, Ryan, our patients, or my patients at least, and I'm sure you're experiencing this with your practice as well, are asking if there are any additional precautions that they should be taking above and beyond the general population. And I'd be interested to hear your take on that. Yeah, this is uh, something that uh, obviously we get asked a lot. And right now, um, the approach that I'm taking is for any of our IBD patients on immunosuppressives. So this would be immunomodulators like 6 mercaptopurine azathioprine, or biologic drugs like infliximab or vedolizumab, or small molecule inhibitors like tofacitinib. Those patients I'm telling to essentially follow the CDC's at-risk population guidelines until we know more about the impact of these medications on their susceptibility to COVID-19 virus. And so that basically uh, is just saying to take the precautions um, particularly seriously. It can basically, I say, take your social distancing to as, as maximum as you can. Obviously, you can't totally hole up in your apartment or house, but um, really trying to limit the number of people you're in contact with and be particularly aggressive about hand washing and trying as best you can to not touch your face. I know that's very difficult as we become more conscious of it, um, but really it's just trying to treat yourself as if you were in that higher risk population, um, like the elderly or people with lung disease. Um, and the CDC has guidelines that, that is constantly updating about if you are considering at risk, what are the recommendations? Um, we're not yet sure if IBD itself uh, predisposes to either getting the infection more easily or having a more severe disease course. Our initial thoughts are that it's probably medication driven, but obviously, obviously this is more of a hypothesis at this point based on our other experiences with other um, infections. Right. So another question that I'm getting, uh, Ryan, are whether or not my patients should stop their medications. And it, for the time being, I'm suggesting to them that stopping their medicines, risking a flare, and then risking a hospitalization are only two additional risks to the infection itself. I'm very interested in hearing your thoughts on medications. Yeah, so I think right now, this is something that we're learning a lot about and we still have a lot of uncertainty around. However, the guidance right now that we're in general saying, and obviously people's case, everyone's case is, is individual and should be discussed with their physician if there's any specific concerns. However, I think that in general for the vast majority of patients, staying on your medications is the right move right now. Um, and that includes biologic drugs and other drugs I mentioned. The one exception I would say is steroids. If patients are on oral steroids, that they should really see if it's possible to taper down to a minimum dose or try to get off of them, uh, because that we know has been associated potentially with um, more severe cases of COVID-19 um, from, from case series in China. The other medications though right now are really um, a black box, we're not sure, um, but we do think exactly as you said that you know, in a time where the healthcare system is overburdened with these cases or potentially going to become overburdened with these cases, um, to limit the chance that someone would have a flare and needing to go to the hospital where they're going to have increased risk of exposure, uh, staying on medication right now is, is most likely the right move. Yeah, and I, and I want to go back for a second in terms of precautions that we caregivers are also observing, not just precautions by doing the, our, this current broadcast on Zoom, but we're doing telemedicine visits at the IBD Center uh, pretty much exclusively now. Uh, for more urgent cases, we are trying to accommodate them here, and we do have skeleton staff here. In fact, that's where I am today. Um, 
So uh, I just want our patients to know that we're gonna make every effort to make sure that their care continues in a seamless fashion, but are going to make uh, precautions, uh, have made precautions here as well. So last question, Ryan, and again, I wanna focus on two. What, what, what are we doing in IBD to better understand exactly how or what this COVID-19 means to our patients and, and maybe even how we could uh, combat it? Sure. So I think there's a lot of interest in, in understanding this, obviously, and there's a couple of initiatives going on right now. One is that the IOIBD, or International Organization for Inflammatory Bowel Disease, has a running commentary uh, through an email chain, and we'll be having a meeting, international meeting, uh, virtually tomorrow to try and develop some more clear, nuanced guidance to patients and physicians um, through what's called a RAND methodology, where essentially people are asked questions and try to come to a consensus. So there will be expert opinion um, guidelines on this or position statement on this that should be out shortly. So that's one thing that's an immediate action. Um, number two is that um, myself with collaborators at University of North uh, Carolina in partnership with many organizations, including IOIBD, uh, ECHO, NASPGIN, ACG, et cetera, um, we're launching a registry for um, cases of COVID-19 in IBD patients where we're collecting information on confirmed cases and what medications the patient was on, how active the disease was, and the outcomes uh, for those patients in terms of hospitalizations and disease severity to get a better sense of which medications um, may be contributing to higher risk of a more severe disease course or are our medications not impacting this uh, at all. So these are a couple of research-related, uh, guideline-related initiatives going on right now. Excellent. Well, listen, thank you. I want to thank you, Ryan, for joining me today. Ryan Ungaro, uh, Assistant Professor of Medicine here at the Mount Sinai, uh, Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and doing wonderful work uh, during this very fluid and uncertain moment to ensure that our patients are getting the care they need and are protected during these uncertain times. So again, thank you, Ryan, for joining me. I'd also like to thank uh, the uh, media staff, uh, uh, for uh, helping get this set up. Uh, and I would like to implore, this is Dr. James Marion uh, from the Susan and Leonard Feinstein IBD Center here at uh, Mount Sinai Medical Center. I'd like to implore you all to be safe and keep in touch with your doctor. And uh, uh, you will hear from us again in a month, if not sooner. Thank you very much.